Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, sharing with you what has become my weekly journey into understanding GDPR, and specifically how Google Analytics and your data is affected by GDPR. And so last week, we did a summary of your data retention policy. I have an update there, and then I have some new things that I wanna talk about with Google Analytics and GDPR in this video, specifically about consent and whether your website visitors need to give consent in order to be tracked. And we created a handy flowchart to help you understand whether or not this is necessary inside of Google Analytics. So listen up if you wanna learn more about GDPR and share with me in the journey of understanding how all this works and how all of it comes together under GDPR. So let's talk about Google Analytics, GDPR, consent, and I'm gonna share with you a flowchart as well. And as a reminder, this is part of my continued attempt to understand how GDPR affects Google Analytics data. Wow, that was a mouthful, and I'm not sure that I really said anything there at all. Bottom line, my GDPR journey continues. Of course, my last video on GDPR generated a lot of questions and comments and requests for clarification. So if we look at this video, I gave a warning about Google Analytics data retention, and you can view it on our YouTube channel or looking at the Jeffalytics website. And on that very same Jeffalytics website, we got 42 people leaving comments, asking for questions, and wondering if there's any point of clarification. And then on the YouTube channel, we got about 18 comments there as well. And there's a lot of people who are wondering, how does this affect them? Well, the reality is that my video struck a chord because Google just sent out an email saying exactly what I put in my video. Basically, you no longer get to use segmentation, custom reports, secondary dimensions. Those things are gone. So what I said is the truth. We can guarantee it here because Google actually confirmed it, and maybe I forced their hand by beating them to the punch and publishing my video. Who knows? We'll never know, but I'm pretty sure that I did. Anyway, there's a lot of questions that are still remaining about whether you can be GDPR compliant and you can retain your data in Google Analytics. Now, before we go too crazy here, I wanna warn you that I'm not an attorney and this is not legal advice. So you should work with your own legal counsel for any GDPR related policies and actions that you take. Ooh, that was another mouthful. The question that is on the mind of many people who have watched my video is, can you be GDPR compliant and still retain your data? And here's a prime example. My friend Mark asked this question on YouTube. He said, hey, I'm concerned. Isn't limiting the data retention part of GDPR? Wouldn't turning it off put you in jeopardy of non-compliance? And just, should I do this, Jeff? Basically, that's the premise of what Mark is asking. My understanding is yes, you can still be compliant and you can retain your data in Google Analytics. Setting this do not automatically expire under your data retention policy is not a GDPR violation if you do these two things in addition to that. Number one is that you allow users to delete their data easily from Google Analytics. And of course, Google is introducing the user deletion tool, which is not available right now, but it will be available in the upcoming weeks. And that is gonna allow you to automatically delete people from Google Analytics based on their client ID, their user ID, or if you're using apps, the app instance ID. So if you allow this capability, you should be good to go. Number two, you need to be able to justify that the storage of your data is for historical research. And so if you look at the European GDPR website, you can see the answer to the question right here that says, for how long can data be kept and is it necessary to update it? And if you read here, they say the shortest time possible, but the exception to the rule is if you're using this data for historical research. And my question back to you is, is analytics historical research? Spoiler alert, it is. Now, if you've ever watched my analytics course or seen my videos, you've probably heard me say several times that analytics is looking at the history of our marketing campaigns to see if we can make improvements in the future. It's basically learning from the past to make future improvements. And so yes, to me, analytics is historical research. And not only that, I would say that analytics is for the public good because it makes the internet better because we're learning from the past and we're making less sucky internet experiences because we have analytics in place. If we didn't have numbers to quantify whether we're doing a good job or not, we wouldn't have anything to improve. And if we can't improve, we wouldn't make a better internet. And so yes, the public benefits from us keeping this analytics data and applying it to our segments and doing historical analysis in order to make things better. Absolutely, 100%, 
This is historical research in my opinion. Of course, there is still the question of how do you actually delete user data from GA? Well, the good news is that once that tool is out there, I'm going to create another video. So I will walk through step by step how to delete user data out of Google Analytics using the tool that Google is going to make available within the next two or three weeks. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about what else is on my mind about GDPR. And if you put it in question form, my answer is I thought you'd never ask. Let's talk about consent. That is, the consent to be tracked, aka cookie pop-ups. Now this is a cookie pop-up that I found on briancliftoncom Brian Clifton is a hero of mine in the analytics world. He worked at Google Analytics, and so he knows a thing about a thing. And he wrote an excellent article talking about whether or not you need to have consent or cookie pop-ups. And the gist of his article is saying, is it always necessary to have cookie pop-ups? So if you read Brian's great article on the topic, I would highly recommend that you do that. And we're going to put a link to it in our YouTube video, and we're going to link to it on the Jefflytics website. He talks about Google Analytics, GDPR, and consent. And the question is, do you need to have a consent pop-up in order to be compliant with Google Analytics or GDPR or anything moving forward? So I'm going to talk about this and summarize what I've learned in terms of Google Analytics. Now my short summary is this. You need consent in Google Analytics if the data being collected is being shared with third parties, i.e. if you use third-party cookies or if you have a third-party widget embedded on your site that sends data outside of your domain name. So from a pure Google Analytics perspective, if you use Google Analytics without display features enabled, Google does not require you to gather consent and have that cookie pop up on your website. But the problem here is that most people are not actually covered by that policy. Why is that? Because most of us don't have a vanilla Google Analytics installation. We might be using plugins, share buttons, video players, other third parties that might also be using Google Analytics tracking in their embed code and they're sending that data to their own repository, and that is, by definition, third-party data. And yes, I know this is a lot of words to get to my point, so let me try showing this to you in a flowchart form. Here's my draft of a Google Analytics GDPR consent flowchart. First question is, does your site have Google Analytics installed? If the answer is no, then specifically for Google Analytics, you don't need a consent pop-up, obviously. That's the easy one. If the answer is yes, then you need to know, do you send your data to third parties, either directly or indirectly? If the answer is yes there, then you obviously need a consent pop-up. If the answer is no, then the next question is, do you have any other tracking tools sending data to third parties? For example, sending data to DoubleClick, sending data to share buttons, anything that sends data to a third party website. If you're a publisher, the answer is probably yes, and you do need a consent pop-up. If you're not doing any publishing and really you are only doing Google Analytics, that's the only tracking you're doing, then the answer is no, and you can get by without that consent pop-up. So the bottom line here is that if you do third-party tracking, you should add a consent dialog to your website. On the other hand, if you do have third-party tracking, but you're not actually using it, then you should just remove that tracking so you don't need to put a consent pop-up in place. Why don't you need that pop-up in place? Because you're not using that third-party data at that point. And you could make an argument that you might lose engagement from your visitors by having that pop-up. And that pop-up and that loss of traffic is not worth the extra effort to put the consent form on your website. So I know what you're thinking. Bottom line at Jeff, you're talking too much. Who is most affected by this? Let's think about it. Who's most affected by these third-party rules and sharing? I would say publishers, people who are running a lot of ads in their sites, bloggers who are running ads, informational sites, data resellers, anything where you put something on your website, maybe you think it's free, maybe it's a WordPress plugin, and then it starts sending data like crazy and overdoing it with people, you are going to be affected by this rule, and you could be out of compliance if you're not careful and if you don't put that consent form in place. So if you are one of these people, or if you're one of the many people who are selling your data to third parties, you should be careful and you should put consent on your website. No questions asked, really. If you want to be compliant, you should be putting this on your website. The next question is, what type of website apps could create a violation in and of themselves? Let's think about it. Anything related to demographics in Google Analytics, remarketing, display ad systems, video embeds by third-party players like Vimeo and Wistia, if they're sending data to their own analytics, that qualifies as a third party. Social sharing buttons like Add This, and comments and third-party WordPress plugins. 
For example, the discuss comment system could put you in violation. Now, where does this rule apply geographically? Let's take a look at the map of what countries are affected by GDPR. Now, I believe I'm putting that in italics because I'm pretty sure this is the countries that are affected. I was surprised to see some countries, well, not really Switzerland, but I was surprised to see Norway and Iceland left out of this and some other European countries. But these are the countries that I believe are affected. And this is a big area and lots of potential visitors are affected. So how do you know personally what percentage of your traffic is affected by GDPR? Well, I created a segment for you in Google Analytics and here's how it works. Now I created a segment and a counter segment. The first one is GDPR countries looking at your traffic and the other one is non-GDPR countries and looking at the traffic from them. And this is applied to a random anonymous website. And as you can see here, this website has about 26% coming from GDPR and the other 74% is coming from non-GDPR countries. And this segment's very easy to apply. Basically all that I did was I looked at the location and I had it match a regular expression with the countries that I saw on that map. And if you're an analyst like me, you can understand the value and the potential loss you're gonna have from the pop-up of consent in GDPR countries, as well as if you were deciding to block GDPR countries altogether so you're not in violation and you didn't wanna cave in and put a consent pop-up on your website, here's what you have to lose. And in this case, in this website, they would lose 90 goals over the time period that they're looking at. And that's a pretty big loss. Somewhere more than 25% of the conversions coming in will be lost on this website if they blocked GDPR countries. And that's a big deal. And this segment will help you understand if you need to take action or not. And finally, I'm going to close out this video by talking about what my team plans to do for GDPR and consent. And this is obviously 100% subject to change because I'm sharing my learning process. I'm only a few steps ahead of the game here, and I might find some more information either right before GDPR or after GDPR is in effect that may change my opinion on how to do this the right way. Number one, I'm gonna minimize the number of third-party embeds that we use, especially the ones that share data without our consent. This is an obvious one. You should audit all the embeds, all the different tracking things that are on your site and see if they are siphoning off your data without your permission or under the guise of being a free plugin. If they're stealing your data, then you are gonna be in violation whether you know it or not. Number two, I'm gonna update my privacy policy as needed and I'm gonna make it more prominent on the site to the extent that it's possible within my current navigation and within my programming skills. Number three, I'm gonna research consent form solutions that allow geofencing. Because I'm not sure that most websites want the 74% of their visitors who are outside of the GDPR range to have to go through that consent pop-up, so I might put a geofence around it for my own personal site. Number four, I'm gonna comply as best as we can using the available systems and resources that are out there. And this includes both my systems and my resources, as well as the systems and resources for the companies that I rely on to do business. Number five, I'm gonna to continue to understand the implications and I'm gonna share them with you as I develop my own personal knowledge and as my team develops their knowledge as well. So that's it, that's what I'm gonna to do to comply with GDPR. And I'm gonna leave you with this. What are you doing to comply with GDPR? Leave a comment on our YouTube video or on our blog post and I would love to know how you're gonna to continue to comply with the GDPR regulations. And if you think this is useful and helpful, make sure you leave a comment there as well because I'm sharing my journey with you. I'm doing it once a week. And by the time that GDPR comes out there, I think we're gonna have a really good understanding of what it does and how it affects our Google Analytics data. And so if you like learning about GDPR and you wanna share our journey, stay tuned for our next video.